This is now case number four of the ESSR quiz in 2024. And we jump right into this image here. You can see we have a funny wrist MRI. And let me just make it bigger for you because we need to zoom in a little bit for this particular case. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Good. So we can see we have a couple of series here, PD coronal and then the PD fat set here. And so again, they show three adjacent slices here. I think this is just to establish that this is actually coming or is inside the distal radial nerve joint. I think that's really the main thing they want to show us here. It has nothing really to do with the tendons. It's a mass which has very irregular margin it has a it's mass like it's it's more than just synovitis but it looks a little bit like synovitis but it's more than that it, also you can see here on the non-fat set um there are these dark dots or so maybe there's some calcifications in there and um, so what could be a process in a joint where we have potentially calcification some irregular stuff so i think synovial osteochondromatosis was my first guess let me double check yeah, that's what I wrote down, synovial osteochondromatosis. I'm going to show you this here. And it was wrong. <laughs> I think it was one of the differentials. I think the, the true answer you would not be able to get out of this um, because we don't really have all the information, in my opinion. If you can't scroll through something like this, we want to know, is it enhancing? Is it synovitis? Is it is it a some form of a hemorrhage, a complex ganglion? Although it doesn't look like a ganglion at all. So we have to assume it's either some tumor or some form of uh, other interarticular body, um, osteochondral body, or something like this. The joint doesn't look like well, there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening, and it's protruding out. So I don't think you can get really more out of this image. So let's see what the answer was, and uh, we have the answer posted somewhere here in the fellowship page. And so this is the answer, and you can see it's a calcified chondroid mesenchymal neoplasm, like. Who knows that, really? Um, or a cystic lesion with chondroid tissue and calcification. So I think it's really to identify there might be calcifications and it's not a gang. I think these are the two main takeaways. Well, I know it's not typical for synovial osteochondromatosis, but if you have to give a guess, that's the best that I came up with. It was resected and no further follow-up was required. Needs gadolinium to determine if purely cystic or solid. So we didn't see the gadolinium images. The franchise really is cyst with debris, so that's what I said. I could potentially be like an atypical ganglion cyst, um, but yeah, it didn't have a very cystic appearance. And the tenosineal giant cell tumor, normally lower signal on T2, like if we go back to the to this, you know, it's unusual for tenosineal giant cell tumors to be so bright on a T2 or a PD fat set. And venous malformation, yeah, that was potentially an idea, but I think it doesn't really look vascular and, you know, also chromatosis. Um, yeah, that's not typical pattern, but yeah, they wouldn't show us the typical pattern anyways. And then some calcified tophus pseudogout. Now this is a very interesting differential, calcified tophus pseudogout, CPPD. Um, yeah, we would want to see radiograph or CT to see whether there is actually calcifications or not. But yeah, so this was case number four. I think this was a very tricky one and not many of us will see that ever again classified chondroid mesenchymal neoplasm. I think if it's atypical, they, we can biopsy or just recommend resection. We don't have to get granular um, uh, yeah, in that sense. They have a reference here, but I don't think we really need to dive into that. Okay, this was a very short one, and let's just move on to the next one then.